I'm Tamer Dawson and I've designed an interior for my Volkswagen Transporter. So I've designed the interior which the interior flows around the vehicle. So it all so when the rock and roll bed go, goes down, it's a full width bed. So it's using all the space which is in the vehicle with storage under all the bed. So with the design, the crucial part is the corner. It flows between the side of the vehicle up to the top, carrying it onto the rock and roll bed. Most designs make them separate, so it's just a bunk and a rock and roll bed. But with this design, everything joins in. The upholstery, I took it to a trimmer but because right. of the corner, I needed to help him because he's never done it before. Uh -huh. So I built everything, but the, like the upholstery on top of it, we worked together because mm. obviously I drew every single diamond on. And then obviously I had the clay, which took more than I expected because I thought like, as an engineer, I thought, ah, oh, just rock up. They say 12 weeks, I can do it in four or five, <laughs> four or five, and I was still like, <laughs> Another side. Oh. <laughs> so it took 12 weeks on that as well. So I was like working 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. on the clay and then going straight back to this and working on this when I get home. But I built it all on SolidWorks first. Okay. So it's all built in SolidWorks, like working and everything. Yes. And then like things like the runners, like normally when they're designed, the runners are on the side. Oh, right. But yes. If you have runners on the side, like one, they look they don't look good. No. Number two, you would have to have a cut in here and it doesn't look sleek. Having the runner on the bottom and a push runner as well. So you don't have to have like a doorknob or anything, you just push it. Hi guys, my name is Paige Han and um, for my major project I decided to do the Ford Capri Mark IV as I owned the third generation, the Mark III. Um, and I decided to do my own um, idea of how it would look like in a modern design to give a rebirth of the European version of a muscle car. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to have um, to fit into the market um, for, and have a great potential for um, as hatchback is driven up the sports coupe. So um, it would be a great opportunity to reintroduce what a sports coupe of a British style would look like. I kept the long bonnet and I looked at the side vents to imply it onto the Mark IV, um, whereas there's a lot of, um, although the Mark I didn't have any functions for the side vents, it was just for the aesthetics, so the side vents for the Mark IV would have a function of cooling the rear brakes. Um, and I decided to keep the long bonnet as well and keep a square arch to give it a muscle feel to it. Uh, I gathered the inspiration from a male's muscle at the, at the back, um, so I, was, I simplified the shape of it and this shape was inspired by a latimus dorsi and I implied it onto the rear arches to give a muscle feel effect to it as it's a muscle car. So that's where the inspiration came from. I uh, looked at the aggression of the lion um, when they are when they're really vicious and they're angry. So I tried to apply it onto the front end of the car, um, which is really sharp and um, it looks as if the eyebrows is a lot of tension in the front. Um, so that's what I've uh, tried to gather the whole uh, visual effect of it. Um, this is the side window of the concept <coughs> and the reason being why I use this inspiration is because they decided to take it out but I thought it would be a great opportunity to apply it onto the Mark IV and made it a more aggressive style than the Mark I, II and III. So it would connect from this line down towards the side vent again so it really balances out the car really well and connects to it. Um, also how this would relate to the previous generation this discontinuous line as it's very hard to see in the Mark II but in the Mark I you could see this really crucial line that, that's uh, a really big feature that the Mark I and Mark II has taken on but uh, I decided to modernise it and have my own way of 
seeing how it would look like on a modern car without making it too parallel to the gra ground line. So I decided to angle it up so it would make much more of like an acceleration and a downforce of feel to it. I did change a lot of it. Um, I d it was originally going to be the, this design, uh, but I don't know if I should include that. It was originally going to be this design, but it was it looked too futuristic and too much like a Mustang, so I decided to so I decided to change it into making it looking like a Capri Moss. So then um, I didn't want it to look like too much of a sister. That's why it goes back to the offer graphic to change it, having it to look like this, so it would look more simplified. Um, so also. It would be against the whole British um, heritage and culture of it if, if it was too conceptual. Uh, hi, my name is Alex Pope. Uh, this is my project. Uh, it's a collaboration within design of uh, Sunseeker and the RNLI. Um, this project is named uh, after my friend and colleague uh, Dominic Newton. Uh, with his nickname being Jed. Uh, I've called the vessel uh, Jed in his honour. Um, it's a 40 metre uh, lifeboat uh, with industrial capabilities, adding new technologies um, and materials uh, into the vessel. The vessel itself has the classic colours given the uh, lifeboat identity um, and presence at sea. When I came to make the side pieces, we tried many different options, but in the end we came into a bit of a makeshift uh, plan using some small mints. Um, yeah, this was then vacuum formed, uh, spray painted and then applied to the vessel. When it came to make the model itself, uh, everything in blue you can see here is all uh, handcrafted with gel ton, uh, a rare Malaysian wood. Um, everything you see in the orange here is 3D printed um, in six different separate parts joined together uh, and mounted onto the boat. And the top bit here uh, in the grey, this is all CNC milled. Uh, finished by hand and sprayed by myself as well. Uh, there's then a matte black wrap um, to show the uh, non-slip coating uh, and then obviously onto the wooden parts on the front and the rear um, to give, this is like some teak effect to give the boat some character. So the reason I went for the RNLI is I feel it's the Forgotten Emergency Service. It's non-government funded and it's something that's not in the public eye anymore. You have the police, the ambulance and the fire service. Uh, all recognisable on a daily basis and the lifeboat is completely forgotten. My name is Dylan Stiles and this is my design story. It's based on the idea of Volvo's Vision 2020 ethos where no driver should be killed or seriously injured after the date of 2020. My target was to create a vehicle that has a visual identity of safety and the design language is a new language for Volvo which should reinforce the customer, the, the audience visually, aesthetically, that, uh, that it's safe and strong and stable. Uh, as you can see the main influence is a uh, cocoon and um, this is because I want the driver to feel cocooned within the vehicle. The driver sits directly in the centre of the car and this is kind of exaggerated by the uh, wheel arches. Uh, the peaks of the arches aim in towards the centre of the vehicle and this all kind of helps create this wraparound effect. I've got some DNA such as cheekbones. Uh, this vertical feature relates to a Scandinavian architecture which uh, the Swedish car companies very proud of their heritage and a light catcher that wraps around the whole vehicle which sets it on the ground and makes it look very planted and stable. Nature was a large part of the influence and the inspiration to my design. Uh, as you can see I've used the gorilla and rhino as well as a lion to uh, kind of reflect uh, strength from nature. Uh, the gorilla's shoulder, uh, the stature and the, the stance the gorilla has, I really wanted to capture the strength and stability that it has when it immediately comes across to you when you see the creature. 
as well as this, the shoulder line of the vehicle comes across uh, and it reflects the rhino's silhouette and the, the sharp uh, angular kind of silhouette at the back of the rhino. From the lion, I've also drawn inspiration. The chiseled face of the lion, it relates to a, a stone kind of strong, perfect form that, that looks natural and honest, which I believe makes the vehicle seem more safe. My name is Joe Parker. Um, this is my Gyre Shark. It's an ocean waste removal uh, boat which removes plastic from the sea. Uh, it specifically focuses on areas of the ocean known as gyres, uh, which are circulating currents um, which trap the plastic and then break it down into microplastics, which are then being eaten by wildlife such as birds and fish. Uh, the gyre shark has a series of nets at the front which uh, extract the plastic and then place it onto a conveyor belt which dries it and then it's stored in containers at the back of the boat. The gyre shark returns to a cargo ship at the end of the day where it's docked and then the plastic is removed, unloaded even, onto the cargo ship and um, sorted into recyclable and non-recyclable plastics. Uh, the non-recyclable plastics uh, can then be sent to a polymer power plant which um, turns it into energy basically through incineration. The recyclables are stored to a later date when the cargo ship returns to land and then can be sold to businesses or used in many different types of products. I'm Adam Maggs and this is my unconventional modern Morgan. Uh, it's an all-electric, all-wheel drive uh, competitor for the American sedan market. I've chosen Morgan because as a kid I used to love the classic styling of the classical Morgan shape. Some unique elements of my design include the strong shoulder line that is uh, very common in all Morgans, past and present. The accentuated front and rear arches, where, again, a lot of Morgans contain very bold, strong arches. The grille is elongated and sort of narrowed in uh, height uh, to fit the modern competitors of the Morgan segment that I'm aiming for. The roof line contains a slide-in uh, section which slides down above the rear passengers and offers utmost luxury for the executives in the rear. Hi, my name is Jahan Zebawan and I've created the Lexus Ground Effect Yacht. For my third year project, I wanted to create a design of a yacht that could hover and uh, the proposal that I had picked was to create uh, a yacht that, that could fly and um, what I've chosen is the Ekranoplan uh, proposal. I wanted to use the same principle as in the Ekranoplan but with having a twist to it with a yacht aesthetic design. And for my project, this is what I've done. The colours that I've picked is British Racing Green colour with white. And um, it's creating a new class of sea travel. And at the same time, trying to overcome motion sickness as well. So I really enjoyed my project. And uh, I think I've managed to create something unique. It's inspired by Lexus. Lexus uh, ethos is creating something amazing and I think this kind of fits into this because it's new, unique and uh, the ethos is amazing. Mm -hmm.